Right, back again with another season preview with Jake Nile. Jake, have a look at the Crows now and uh, an up and down off season for them in terms of personnel. Yeah, well, they've got in the, this, I guess you can call him the number one draft pick, even though he was technically number two, uh, Riley Tilthorpe. Uh, yeah, they've, but they've lost, of course, Brad Crouch to St Kilda to free agency and Rory Atkins to the Gold Coast Suns to free agency. They've traded um, Hardigan to Hawthorne. So the experience has gone out. They're in a full-scale rebuild, but they're in probably year two, or year two of that process. So it's, it's, it's a lot. And of course, they're um, they've 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 long departed from from the Eddie Betts era, which was something that I think deflated them somewhat. I guess a lot of Crows fans have been waiting for Darcy Fogarty to come and make his mark on the team. Uh, Taylor Walker's sort of on the on the decline now. Is this the year that Fogarty stands up and cements his spot in the team? Well, he has to, and if if they're picking. If they're, if they're not picking Darcy Fogarty, then something's wrong. Um, then he's probably not a long-term answer. So, yeah, he needs to stand up and they need to change the age profile of in, in some key areas to get the, the games into the younger players because that 2017-2018 period, 2016-2017 period is, is long gone now and really there's only remnants of that team left as, as, um, as, they, as they go under, um, you know, Matthew Nix and they try... To, to, to climb the ladder steadily. There were much better signs, though, late in the season. I and mean, there was talk at one point last year that the Adelaide Crows might not win a game for the whole season. And right at the end, they, uh, they did come good. So I think that there's a little bit more optimism about this year than there was from the midpoint of last year. A big talking point around the Crows will be some of the big names that are out of contract this year. Uh, Matt Crouch, Tom Duday, Rory Laird, Daniel Talia, Riley O'Brien, Tom Lynch. What's the pressure like on the Crows to re-sign those guys and keep a bit of confidence amongst the supporter base? Well, I, I don't think that the pressure's that massive on the club in the sense that when you're at rock bottom, you actually don't... The, the worth of a player who's anything less than a superstar is actually not that great. So I, I, I see the pressure more on those players to actually perform um, and convince either the Crows or another club that they're worth what they want to be worth. So I would see it in a, in a completely different light. When you're down, one of the great advantages you've got is that you've got a blank canvas. You can re, you, you're not under they're not under pressure to win many games. Of course, in Adelaide, it's a cauldron, and there'll be a lot of media around their performance. But uh, but you know they're not. I, no one expects them to win more than five games this season. I wouldn't think five or six games. In in my view, outside of the club, they'll want to do better. But I don't think many external people will expect that. So no, I see the pressure more on those players than on the club to keep them. Like a lot of other clubs, they spent much of last year on the road in hubs and played a few games towards the end of Adelaide Oval. Do you think going back to Adelaide Oval and that Adelaide bubble, like you said, is a positive for them, or do you think it might, you know, hurt them throughout the year? No, I think it'll be a positive because I think that they'll have they'll be more settled. Uh, they were they were um, they didn't adjust that well. I don't think to the COVID situation, um, which favoured heavily the more mature teams like Richmond, uh, Geelong, these sides that have that have got that have got um, a, a very, very strong core of experienced players. Adelaide was, was sort of shedding its skin in that regard, and I think, I think it hurt them. They'll be much better at home playing every second week at the Adelaide Oval. Well, their first month of fixtures isn't too bad. They played Geelong round one, which will be difficult, but then after that, Sydney, Gold Coast and North Melbourne. It's an important opening month for the Crows, isn't it? Yeah, well, if they don't get, say, two wins in that period, you wouldn't think they're going to get many for the season. So they probably need to win two of those games. North Melbourne's a, a, probably a must-win in terms of, we're already looking at a must-win game before the season in terms of when you look at creating optimism for your fans and to, to get that esprit de corps among the playing group. So, yeah, it's the pressure's on in terms of that, but not in terms of their final destination because it's a rebuilding year. Well, we'll jump into predictions now, Jake. Uh, who do you see as the big improver this year for the Crows? Well, I, I think it'll be Rory Sloan. Um, he's, a, you know, he's, he's in the twilight of his career, uh, but he's close to their best player when he's right. Um, he didn't have a great year last year. He's had a lot of injuries over, over the last couple of years. But I think at his best, he's a gun, and you back the guns if they get the, their body right to get it right on the field. And he's a player that has enormous character, and I think, I think he'll perform very well. Well, as you said before, a lot of eyeballs on the club this year. Who's the pressure on in particular at the Crows? Well, the pressure's on Tex Walker um, as the uh, former captain as the key forward, the, the, the remaining sort of key forward who's got experience that they rely on the most. Um, Himmelberg, of course, coming up as a, as a promising player. Uh, yeah, definitely Tex Walker because he, he may not be there uh, in 2022 if he doesn't perform pretty well in 2021. Uh, the other one I think to look out for, this is really, it might sound really ridiculous, but Riley Tilthorpe would be under pressure just being effectively 
the number one draft pick um, in a town as football obsessed and obsessed with the Crows as Adelaide. So he will be wearing, and a local, so he'll be wearing a little bit of premature Messiah status, um, which he obviously won't be able to live up to in his first year. But he'll, his first game will be very closely watched. Well, they claimed the wooden spoon last year, finishing 18th. Uh, is it going to get any better for the Crows, do you think? I think it'll get marginally better, um, but not a lot better. I, they'll be certainly in the bottom four, in my view. I don't see them rising out of that. They just don't have the personnel at this stage, which makes Matthew Nick's job difficult. Um, but the club, at least, should have a very clear picture of where they stand.